Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today's video, we are gonna talk about intermittent fasting. If you're here, I'm assuming you are thinking about whether you should try it. Quick disclaimer that in this video, we will discuss weight loss, calories, energy balance. If these things are not helpful to your personal health journey, please give this video a miss. We'll talk about what it is, the different types of intermittent fasting, whether it works for weight loss, and whether it has any superior effects for health and metabolism. So what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is an eating schedule that increases the amount of time that your body is in a fasted state. This is done by making your eating windows smaller. There are a few different types of intermittent fasting to be aware of. There's the 5-2 diet. This is where energy is restricted to about 500 calories on two days a week. Then there's alternate day fasting. So this alternates between a day of regular eating and a day of fasting, then a day of regular eating and a day of fasting, and so on. Then there's time-restricted eating. This is probably the most popular one at the moment. This is where you restrict your eating window in the day. The most common one is 16-8. Here, people would spend 16 hours fasting and eat all their meals within a span of eight hours. For example, they would start eating at 9 a.m. and stop at 5 p.m. or it could be, for instance, from noon until 8 p.m. The thing to keep in mind is during the eating window, intermittent fasting permits basically all foods. There are no rules around them. During fasting, it would be nothing that provides the body with any calories. So for example, it would be water, black tea, black coffee, although there are some arguments that coffee might break the fast. So what actually happens to the body in a fasted state? Let's talk about what happens when we eat. When we eat, our body digests the food and the nutrients are absorbed into our blood. Here you'll see blood sugar levels go up or for example, blood fat levels go up. Our blood sugar levels need to remain stable. So to counteract that rise, our body releases insulin. Insulin signals to cells around our body to take up that glucose that's in our blood into the cells. Because of that, insulin is an anabolic hormone or a building hormone. So then what happens when we fast? How do we get energy? We pull it from our stores into our blood. So first we pull glucose from glycogen stores and then once that's depleted, we start pulling from our fat stores for energy. This is basically what popularized intermittent fasting, that when we're fasting, we're not having to release as much insulin and we're spending more time pulling from our stores instead of building them back up. So does this automatically lead to weight loss? No, not necessarily, because weight is gonna depend on total energy balance. This is the total amount of energy that you take in in a day and the total amount of energy that your body burns in the day. So if during their eating window, someone takes in less energy than the total energy that they burn during the day and they sustain this for a period of time, that can result in weight loss. If they take in the same amount of energy as they burn, they'll maintain their weight. And equally, if in that period, they take in more energy than their body burns and they sustain this for a period of time, they can also gain weight. So then for someone whose goal it is to lose weight, is intermittent fasting effective? Here is a trial that compared restricting calories with and without intermittent fasting. The trial had 139 people with obesity. Half were assigned to just restricting their calories, so a regular calorie reduction diet. The other half were also asked to restrict their calories, but also they were asked to eat all their meals within a certain time period of the day, from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. They were asked to do this for a year. So what happened? At the end of this time period, they found that both groups lost weight and they found no significant difference between the amount of weight that the groups lost. They also found that there was no difference in their general metabolic health markers. The authors concluded that this time-restricted eating regimen was not more advantageous compared to daily calorie restriction. Here's a study that pulled together a range of different trials that studied the effects of intermittent fasting. They found 12 studies that compared intermittent fasting to daily calorie restriction. And here as well, they report the same thing. There was no difference between the two approaches. Where we find there may be a difference is for people who are at risk of type 2 diabetes. This same study reported on five trials that looked at whether intermittent fasting could affect people's ability to better regulate their blood sugar levels. And they report that there was an improvement with this approach. Let me show you this other study. This one was really rigorously designed. It's a clinical trial in men who were at risk of type 2 diabetes and also who were overweight. So here we're comparing a six hour eating window to a 12 hour eating window. What's really interesting here is they kept them in energy balance to prevent them from gaining or losing weight because they wanted to see whether independent of weight loss 
does this six hour eating regimen have any health effects? And what they found was in the time restricted eating regimen, their insulin sensitivity improved. That's a good thing. We want to be insulin sensitive. And the reason this could be happening is because of our body clock and our circadian rhythms. There are a few things to keep in mind here though. This doesn't apply to everyone. It's this patient group. We also don't know what the long-term effects are of this sort of regimen. And also keep in mind the eating regimen. 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. may not really be feasible for general life. So let's wrap up key takeaways. For weight loss, Energy balance is still fundamental. Of course, for food and diet, it's not only about calories. There's a lot more to food than just calories. Calories only tell us a one small piece of the pie when it comes to food and their health benefits. There are certain foods that can make maintaining energy balance easier. For example, they're more filling. But at the end of the day, for weight loss, there does need to be a calorie deficit that's sustained over time. Intermittent fasting has been shown to be an effective strategy for weight loss. That being said, it is no more effective than daily calorie restriction. Both can be ways to create a calorie deficit. So here it's really down to an individual's lifestyle. A person will not be at a disadvantage if they were not to do intermittent fasting and just do a calorie restriction approach. Equally, some people may find that the intermittent fasting approach works really, really well for their lifestyle. It's all about what works for each individual and that they're able to really sustain as a lifestyle. That being said, when we eat may have really important effects on our metabolic health, and that's down to our body clock and circadian rhythms. Front loading our energy at breakfast and lunch and keeping it a little bit lighter at dinner could be a good idea, particularly for people who are at a higher metabolic risk for conditions like type two diabetes. We do need to keep in mind though that intermittent fasting may not be suitable for everyone, particularly people who have to have medication and have food with it, people who are pregnant or breastfeeding, and as well, people who are at risk of eating disorders. I hope that this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.